I've been thinking about this for a while. I was in the top management of my company, my annual salary was in the six figures, and I was enjoying the fruits of years of hard work and dedication to it. My only problem was my wife, Judy. Soon, it would be 25 years of our life together, when we met, she was a beautiful girl. Her figure was incredible. She was smart, energetic, supportive, loving, and faithful. In short, Judy was the perfect wife. That was then, and this is now. After having two wonderful children in 25 years of marriage, she put on a little weight. She's also become quite boring. Who wants to hear about soap operas and those damn reality shows? I'd outgrown Judy in every way. I didn't want to take her to company events and luncheons. I wanted a wife who would be recognized and even envied by other executives, not pitied. I was only a few years away from my 50th birthday, and I wanted no. I needed to prepare for my peak earning years and then retirement. I needed a woman whom I could proudly accompany to dinners and other social events. I needed a woman who understood how difficult my business was and could help me achieve my lofty goals. In short, Judy held me back. Most of the other men in the upper management of my company had left their first wife and married younger sexier women who were more suited to men of their position and power. It was time to make some tough decisions. I don't know when the idea actually crystallized. I mulled over my options for almost a year. I didn't want to seem like an insensitive selfish bat who left his wife, the mother of his children, to find a hot young nymph. I needed to find a way to justify my actions. I needed to look like a victim, not some monster. I had many reasons to be cautious. Judy was a wonderful mother to our children and I didn't want to push them away. Then there was the fact that my aging parents seemed to love Judy more than they loved me. Several times, Judy and I had a real marital disagreement, and my mother was burning a new hole in my ass and sticking up for Judy. How can a mother forget who her real child is? Both my sisters were Judy's best friends, and Judy's brother was my golf partner. He was a great guy, but he was the big brother and always took care of his little sister those were some of the things I faced. I realized that the only way to end my marriage while maintaining harmony with my family was to prove that Judy was cheating on me. That would strengthen my position. Although I suspected that my mother would probably still say that Judy had been right to look for a real man, once I had decided that I had to prove that Judy was having an affair, it followed that it was imperative that it happen. It was no easy task. I was sure she'd always been faithful to me, I'd rather bet on peace in Iraq than have Judy break her marriage vows. Judy was by nature a very loyal and loving woman. Early in our marriage, I noticed the way men looked at Judy. She was extremely desirable to any man unless, of course, he was blind. I needed to protect my interests in regard to my wife. I immediately talked Judy into starting a family and worked to support us. Judy became a wonderful mother and it was not difficult to talk her into marriage. As the children grew up, I convinced her that they needed her as a full-time mother and even then, she was a beautiful and very desirable woman. Having two children made her even more voluptuous. If I'd let Judy get a job, men would be trying to seduce her the time. I had no doubt about that. Now the children were grown. Our daughter had graduated from college as an accountant and our son was in his senior year. He was already applying for jobs in his engineering specialty. I was very proud of how my children turned out, and attributed much of their access to Judy's constant attention and love. Our nest emptied and Judy began to put on weight as the children graduated from high school and left for college. She was bored and started eating out a lot to fill her time. She started spending more and more time in front of the TV and snacking. She didn't say anything to me, but I guess she put on 40 pounds or more in two years. E tits were bigger than ever. As was E, ass, and thighs, she was self-conscious about her weight and no longer used our pool. How could I interest her in having an affair when she was so ashamed of her figure? Where could she meet men who might be interested in her? Not in front of the TV, gradually, my plan took shape. The reasons I had kept Judy at home for so many years were the same reasons I was going to push her out into society. 
Honey, I've noticed you've been bored at home lately. I began. I think you'd be happier if you got a job. Even a part-time job could provide some interesting experiences and relieve your boredom. Jason, you could read minds, Judy Grind. I've been thinking about getting a job for a while, but I didn't know how to tell you. You never wanted me to work outside our house. I was afraid I'd upset you if I went somewhere else. I just wanted you to be where our children needed you, Judy. They're grown and gone, and we need to think about your needs too. I replied calmly, why don't you start checking websites and classifieds to look around? To be honest, Jason, I've already done that. I have a few ideas. I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but I'm sure I can find something that will fit into our schedule. I don't want to steal the time I have with you, honey. Judy added, I silently congratulated myself on how cleverly I'd planted the seed. The hardest part was having the patience to make my plan work. I knew it might be a year or more before it came to fruition. I knew it would be a long road, but I needed to discipline myself to stay the course. Just three days later, Judy broke the news to me over dinner. Jason, I found a position I like. Judy blurted out as she prepared the second chop. Doggy style, I'm well aware of that, Judy, but it's nothing new unless you've tried it with the mailman. I joked. I thought Judy was going to choke on the mashed potatoes as she struggled to breathe. Don't joke while I'm eating. Judy laughed. Actually, it was a UPS delivery guy, and if he hadn't shown me how to do it, I wouldn't have believed it was even possible. The difficulty is keeping the goat away from the whipped cream and pickles, at least before it has to eat them. I pondered this answer for a moment pretending to calculate all the possibilities while Judy looked me in the face. You know, I'm not a big fan of whipped cream. But you know about my rather strong attraction to goats, I grind. I'm afraid the UPS man, though well-intentioned, offered a pose that I have to decline. Yes. I told him that you were too fond of most farm animals to feel comfortable in the pose he had so kindly shown me. Judy nodded. He promised to have honey, carrots, and a Doberman on his next tour of our neighborhood. Dogs don't like sweets and vegetables, so I don't see how that will work. In the spirit of expanding my horizons of interaction with my husband, I agreed to try his alternatives with him. Good girl. I complimented her. That sounds like something I'd be interested in. Am I right in thinking that in this new scenario, I will be replacing the goat and the Doberman will take my place, so you've done this before? Judy grind. Damn. I thought I'd found something new. I expect we don't have a husband on the block who hasn't done the old honey dog carrot trick a few times, I replied. Jason, it's so hard to be serious with you. I got a job. Judy laughed. I'm enrolling in a real estate sales course next week. Sam Galt of Sam Galt Real Estate is sponsoring me. In a few weeks, I will be a licensed professional in this field. I should have been pleased with the news Sam Galt was not only the most successful real estate broker in the area, but he was known everywhere as a real stud. He would probably tear Judy up like a net on a door somehow the thought made my stomach turn. I know all about his success with the ladies. Jason, I saw you frown when I mentioned his name. You don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. Besides, he'd never want a fucking old cow like me. He'd fuck a snake if he could put its head under a rock. I objected. He wouldn't hesitate to take you or any other cow that comes into his pasture. Judy jumped up, ran into the bedroom, and slammed the door shut. It occurred to me that I'd made a couple of grave mistakes. I'd sort of agreed with her own assessment that she was a cow and yet I'd somehow protested against her working with Sam Galt. I mean, he fit my scheme better than any other person in the entire Poconos. I'd have to work on my natural tendency to be possessive and on my jealousy. Would the bastard have my wife, or is she too chubby for him? Who did he think he was refusing to sleep with Judy I realized I was losing my mind and decided it was time to step up my game. I walked into the bedroom and found Judy crying with her head buried in her pillow. I sat down on the bed and started massaging her shoulders. Judy, I'm an idiot. We had a great time, and I stupidly ruined it. 
I promise I will never suggest that your relationship with Sam Galt is anything less than professional, I admitted. I trust you completely, and I will never let you see any form of jealousy on my part ever again. It doesn't hurt as much as you agreeing that I'm a cow Judy whale. I'm just a fat middle-aged housewife. Why am I trying to fool myself by getting a job in sales? People don't buy from pigs. I have to settle for something more appropriate for an old cow. If it's a problem, let's solve it instead of wailing and howling. I suggested rubbing Judy's big ass. Tomorrow, I'll sign us both up at Silver's Gym. We'll get in shape together. Hell, if you lose a few pounds, but stay with those breasts, you'll have male clients eating out of your bra. I mean, your hands. Would you like to join in and come with me? Judy sobbed into her pillow. I thought I needed to get in shape so I could find a really hot hottie when I was single again. Judy needed to lose more weight for some guy to want the hell out of her, so it was a win-win situation. I was amazed at how smart I had become. It even made me look like a loving attentive husband. Honey, I'd love to join you at the gym. In a year, we'll be in the best shape of our lives. You'll see I promised. The next day I walked into the gym, filled out the forms, paid my dues, and got started. Judy being a woman to the core insisted that we buy special clothes to work out in. We had to look good while we sweated and suffered. I was about to object until it occurred to me that gyms turned out to have a lot of new opportunities. There would be other male dogs out there trying to lose weight. Judy would look good. Hell, she was still a very attractive woman, even with the extra pounds, that could work in my favor. While we were shopping, Judy decided she needed a professional closet for her new career. I figured it was too early to buy clothes for a job that required passing a state exam. It could be a daunting task. But I held my tongue because I had to be a loving and supportive husband to my wife and all things. We could afford it. And besides, if I could prove adultery, I would save more in the divorce than the close cost. It took a couple days to buy all the accessories. Judy's opinion was that we should be stylish while we suffer. She also changed her food buying habits. I couldn't find chips in the damn house anymore. We only had cauliflower granola bars, and other crap for snacks, there was less food, and it always included salads, Judy didn't starve herself or me, but she certainly cut back on her calorie intake, we would meet at the gym after Judy finished her classes, she told me all about her day when we used the treadmill, I wondered how she could walk so far and so fast and still talk without stopping, I was sweating like a butcher and could only barely nod in agreement at times. I got up every morning tired and exhausted and wondered if the whole plan had been worth the effort. The second week, it got a little easier. So Judy increased the pace and then increased the incline. Once we got used to the exercises, she added weight to them. She watched me like a hawk, always pushing me to my limits. At first, I resented this. Then I realized that she was stressing herself out even more. We'd spend about an hour a half in the gym and Judy was working hard every minute of it. Then for crying out loud, Judy started learning French. I mean, she decided to learn to read and write French to help herself relax from poring over manuals on the art of real estate sales. I, on the other hand, always thought beer was a much better alternative to relax. The day came for the exam. She was very nervous, and I did everything I could to assure her readiness. I helped her study and ended up learning a lot about real estate sales myself. I waited in the living room while Judy took the test and actually fell asleep. All the exercises we were doing were increasing my stamina, but I found that when I relaxed, I really relaxed. Judy woke me up by shaking me by the shoulder hey, sleepy head. She laughed. I passed the test, how do you know? Don't we have to wait for the results in the mail? I asked come out of the Stone Age Neanderthal? Judy smirked. Computers are in fashion now, I only answered one question wrong. Sam will be happy to hear about my results. There's that name again. This time, I held back a smile. I knew Judy was watching me closely and wondered, well, why couldn't the UPS man have slept with her instead of that dick? Those guys must know how to seduce housewives I just thought I'd rather cheat with a stranger than that damn Sam Galt. 
then I wondered why it mattered to me. I didn't have an answer to that question, in the end, I told myself that Judy should enjoy getting lost for the first time, then I would put her through hell by telling all our relatives about her and kicking her ass out, I had to admit that my plan wasn't perfect, as the weeks passed, Judy had had her fair share of real estate sales failures, in fact, she hadn't actually sold anything yet and wasn't even close to doing so, I was afraid she would give up. Come home and eat bond bonds again, if that happened, the UPS guy would be my only hope. We continued to go to the gym and eat salads. I began to notice a difference in my appearance, my waist had shrunk to a size 34 and my shirts fit me like they were supposed to, my stamina became much better, and several women in my office remarked how much my appearance had proved, I realized that when the time came, I could pick a replacement for Judy, I secretly admired myself in our mirror several times a day. I was a man, today, Sam Galt asked a buyer to sign a contract on one of my listings. Judy was glowing, when and if it closes, I'll get $5,220. It's not a fortune, but it's a start. I think I've been concentrating too much on direct sales, Jason. Listing agents make easy money. From now on, I'm going to focus on listing properties for sale online. She added. That's a great start, Judy, I exclaimed. Do you want to celebrate? Sam taught me not to spend money or even celebrate the sale until check is in my hands, too much can happen before the sale closes, Sam was extremely thoughtful and helpful. Judy admitted, and I knew why. He wanted to ram my wife. He was at the be professional and polite stage of seduction. It would be a couple months before he'd get to the show me your appreciation stage. The guy was a snake. Good thing he was an integral part of my master plan, otherwise, I would have ripped his balls off and shoved them down his throat. True to her word, Judy began listing sidewalks, bushes, developments, and even farmland for sale on searchable listings. By the time her first deal closing approached, she had five more listing contracts coming due and $42,000 due when they closed. A week before the first deal closed, she signed a contract for a farm that she was listing herself. The agreed upon price was $845,000 and her commission as listing and selling agent totaled over $35,000. If she continued at this pace, her income would easily exceed mine in her first full year of her working life. Sam invited us to celebrate on Thursday, Jason, this will be my first deal closing party, though it looks like there will be many more, he's taking us to a restaurant called Sugar Powdered Sugar, he's invited the entire sales team, including the secretaries, as well as all the spouses, it's going to cost him more than I'll make on the sale, but he feels I've demonstrated that I'm worth every penny. Penny concluded. I mean, Judy. The bastard could afford to spend money on extra assholes. I did some quick math and came to the conclusion that Judy was working for a man who was screwed out of his fortune. I just hoped that one of the other salesmen would step up to the plate first and hook up with Judy before that asshole Sam plowed her. Sounds great, honey. The only problem is that I have to go to Maryland on Thursday night for an early meeting on Friday. I need to leave around 9 so I can get some sleep and be ready for my early meeting, I stated, Jason, you have been so good to me I appreciate everything you've done and the way you supported me and been so patient these past few months, I would be the most selfish bitch on the planet if I complained about you having to leave I'm just glad you can do it at all. She concluded. It seemed like the stars had aligned, and my plan had a heavenly blessing or something. If I left Judy at a dinner party in the warm glow of her success, add to that a few glasses of liquor, she would become a pretty easy target for Sam Snakehead Gold. Judy would cheat on me, and I would be the offended party. I wondered why the apparent success of my plan didn't make me happier. Thursday morning, I packed my overnight suitcase before going to work. Judy and I agreed to meet at a restaurant since it was on the way to Maryland. I could stay longer if I didn't have to drive her home and then drive back down that road to Maryland. I would save over an hour on the trip. I got to the restaurant before Judy did, so I walked over to the bar and had a drink. Chatted with a few of the vendors Judy was working with while waiting for her arrival. 
Everyone congratulated me on my beautiful resourceful wife. Sam Galt even shook my hand and spent ten minutes telling me what good qualities my Judy had, he told me all this, but what he really said was he didn't really say anything inappropriate, but I know how a man thinks, believe me. Finally, Judy came into the room. I didn't look in her direction when she came in, but I noticed there was a silence in the room, so I turned around to see what had caused it and almost shit my pants. Judy was wearing a tight black dress. It was short, very short. The cleavage was amazing, and her legs were fantastic. I was admiring myself too much in the mirror and didn't notice Judy's metamorphosis. Her waist looked tiny like she really was a real hourglass. I found it hard to breathe as she glided across the room and kissed me. Soon, she was the center of attention and rightly so. She laughed, smiled, joked, and chatted with every man and woman at the party. She practically reined it in. There were several young women there who had gotten a lot of attention before Judy arrived. Now they were hardly looked at at all. I tried not to drink much, so Judy wouldn't worry about my traveling. I stayed sober and watched the horny bastard swirling around duty like flies on sugar. It was obvious that many of the men wanted to get into Judy's panties, but the big bull, Sam Galt, was making it clear that he was here first. It's amazing how easy these things are to see when you know what to look for. I was sure that Sam not only knew I had to leave, but was hoping to get my ass out the door soon. Well, honey, I need to hit the road. You look incredible tonight, and I'm proud of you darling, I told Judy as I kissed her. Don't stay out too late and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Thank you so much, Jason. I'll be careful. Don't worry. By the way, that reminds me of something, Jason. The brakes on my car suddenly started making a grinding noise, so I dropped it off at Ollie's auto service this morning. I think don't worry about it, honey. I interrupted. You can get a new one, any color you want, and do what you want with it. I'll see you tomorrow night. As I turned to leave, I saw Sam Galt walk up to Judy and engage her in conversation. He wasted no time in getting her to bed. All I had to do was wait a couple hours, go home and catch him in our bed. I bought a new digital camera with a good flash so I could record the event for posterity my family, Judy's family, and the courts. I drove to a small bar about five miles from home and settled in to wait there. I needed to be patient and make sure Sam had enough time to work his way into Judy's bed, my bed, actually. As I sipped my beer, I thought about how well everything had turned out. It was really supernatural. Judy was putty in my hands as I led her through my convoluted plot. Just as I suggested, she got a job right away. Who would have thought she would find one so lucrative? She went to the gym with me encouraging her to do so was practically unnecessary. Who would have thought the chubby woman of those days would show up at a party a few months later looking like a supermodel? Hell, she'd still be better off without me. I pondered my next move. In a few months, I'd be a divorced, successful, and pretty good looking guy and I'd be back on the dating market. How hard could it be? I just had to be careful not to fall for a gold digger who would take everything I had from me. I'd already found an honest, intelligent, sincere woman once I needed to do it again. Judy won't have any problems. She makes good money and will be able to take care of herself. She had already lost most of the extra weight she had added over the years and looked great. I noticed that her breasts had gotten a little smaller, but not much for the weight she had lost. She was definitely comfortable at the party chatting with everyone and laughing at their jokes and comments. Judy had a way of making a guy feel special. That's why I had to watch her so closely over the years. If I hadn't, she probably would have been stolen from me years ago. I was so right to leave her at home mom. It was obvious that now that she was slimmer and working, she was in constant contact with men who wanted to seduce her. Then a thought occurred to me, how could I keep my new younger wife safe from these wolves? I certainly didn't want to start a new family to keep her at home. She would have to be at the gym, at work, or at various social events, and I would have to watch her every minute. What if she had a high libido and I wouldn't be able to keep up with her? Judy had always enjoyed sex with me. At least it seemed that to me, 
But she wasn't the kind of woman who only lived for sex, she lived for her family. And for me, hell, she wouldn't do anything to hurt me or anyone she loved. That's why sex with Judy was so tender and careful. She wanted to love and be loved, not stupidly fuck. That stupid bastard Sam would never understand that. Judy was a lady, and she needed to be treated like one. It made me sick to my stomach to think of Judy with Sam or anyone at all. Other men would not understand or appreciate her spirits, her humor, her love of family and her character. She was whole and deserved the best. If that was the case, why was I trying to set up her affair? It dawned on me that the problem was me. It wasn't Judy. I was getting older, and I felt like I was missing something, but I had no idea what. Somehow I figured Judy was holding me back, but from what? How could a wonderful mother and wife hold me back? It was my passing youth, that's what I felt. A younger woman would actually make me feel older, not younger. Would anyone take care of me? my parents, my children, my health like Judy did. Damn, I knew the answer to that question. What had I done? I got up and headed for the door hoping I wouldn't be late. As I drove home, all sorts of thoughts were swirling around in my underdeveloped brain. The ride seemed to take forever. What would I do if I found Sam in our bed when I got home? Kill him and throw Judy out? I knew I would never do that. I was more inclined to kill Sam than risk losing Judy regardless of her actions. Suddenly, I needed her more than I had ever needed her, and more than I had ever needed her. I would tell Sam to leave and ask Judy to forgive me for being such a fool. A grim smile appeared on my lips as I considered the irony. I was ready to catch my wife sleeping with another man and ask her to forgive me. I just hope she didn't have any feelings for this asshole and that it was just sex as cheating spouses often claim. I was willing to accept that and would be damn glad to hear it. The problem was this, Judy wasn't the type to have sex without emotional attachment. I was sure of it, I saw an unfamiliar car parked in our driveway in front of my garage door as I drove down the street, I felt a lump in my throat as I parked next to it, the front door was locked so I carefully unlocked it and headed for the bedroom. Then I heard it, the voices were coming from the master bedroom, I had royally screwed up. I briefly considered leaving, but I realized that this was something I would have to face and try to fix. Running away from a problem is not solving it. As I approached the door, I saw a beam of light shining through the crack. I slowly turned the knob wary of what I would find. Taking a deep breath, I pushed the door open and stepped inside, Judy cried out in surprise when I suddenly appeared. I looked around and saw no one else, where were the voices coming from? Then I saw that she was wearing the headphones she uses when she listens to her French cassettes. She was alone studying French. What the hell are you doing here, Jason? Judy demanded an answer, you scared the hell out of me. I'm still shaking. Look at my hands shaking. You burst through the door like some kind of murderer or a jealous husband or Jason, did you expect to find someone with me? The moment of truth has arrived. What was I supposed to tell her? Sometimes a little lie is better than the truth. Marriage had taught me that, except it was usually about things like taking out the trash or cleaning out the basement. Was there any way to get out of the mess I had made or tried to make myself? Then I saw the big carrot next to Judy and realized that I was going to be allowed home for free. It was obvious that she wasn't expecting any company this night. I'm looking for that damn Doberman. I see a carrot. UPS delivers at this time of night, or were you waiting for someone else? Whose car is that standing in the driveway? Judy blushed like he'd never blushed before. I was just I was going to I've never used it before, Judy blushed. I missed you. I well, I was very lonely, and I rented a car from Ollie because the brakes on my car are really bad. Judy, you were incredibly beautiful tonight, and I couldn't go to Maryland. I asked Jack to cover for me at the meeting, and I rushed over to you, you're the best wife a man could ever have. I wailed, panting. Tears came to my eyes, Jason, you've been so supportive. You encouraged me to get a job 
helped me study for my exam, bought me all kinds of clothes, and helped me lose weight, Judy smiled. I am indebted to you, and I love you very much, in fact, I think I love you more than ever, and that's a lot, then if you don't mind, I'll sweat those damn carrots out of the place I suspect they were intended for and then replace them there with something warmer, I asked. That would be super my dear. But don't forget to add more honey and hurry up, the courier from FedEx could be here any minute, laughed the love of my life.